Howdy folks, my name is Richie, aka Bog Honor, and now that Guild Wars 2 is free to play, there's a large influx of new players in the game, so I thought I would compile a list of my top 10 tips for new players to Guild Wars 2. And number one should be, don't hit the chickens in the fields of ruin because they come very angry and they kill you. But that's just a bonus tip, there's 10 more coming at you right now. Number 10. When you first create your account and log into the game, you're going to be hit with this world select screen even before you create your first character. Now my good friend Aurora Peachy already did a full video explaining what are the advantages and disadvantages for choosing world, so I'm going to link to that video on the screen right now. After the world selection, you're going to create a character, otters are awesome, you're going to log into the game, and you're going to be hit with a tutorial instance that you'll have to play through. This will give you a quick and dirty overview of how to move around and do some basic combat maneuvers and put you into your first different combat experiences. Once you come out of that story instance, you're going to be put in a level 1 to 15 zone. This is a newbie starter area and it's always going to be near the capital city of the race that you chose. So there's actually five different starting areas. I picked human here, so I'm going to be near this great capital city of Divinity's Reach. My first tip is to be on the lookout for vendors on your map with these little coin symbols right near your spawn point there should be some of these and those vendors will sell bags now you might not have the coin to buy these bags right away but take note where these vendors are so that after you do a couple events or kill a few monsters you can come back here and purchase these very cheap bags stocking up on these bags makes it so you have more inventory and you can take less trips back to town to sell things that way you can spend more time adventuring and leveling up quickly. After you purchase the bags, you can right click and hit equip on them, or you can simply drag them over to the empty spots in your inventory screen. Look at all that room. Ah. Number 9. As you're wandering around, you might see these little symbols on your mini-map, these little wood logs or these little herb seedlings, and you might be scratching your head wondering why you can't do anything with them. Well, once you hit level 9, you will be awarded with a full set of gathering tools so that you can gather these materials. Now, there aren't a ton of gathering nodes that are nearby the newbie area, but what you can do is if you want to get your hands on them before level 9 is you can go into the capital city that's nearest to where you spawned into the game. In this case, it's Divinity's Reach, and you go in the city and look for merchants by uh, these little coin symbols here. You can see I found a merchant pretty close in here. They sell the copper harvesting sickle, copper logging axe, and copper mining pick. I can buy them for 24 copper each. So you have to save up a little bit of coin before you can afford these, but once you have these puppies, you can open up your hero panel by hitting H, and you can equip them into these three slots. Unlike other games, you do not need any kind of gathering profession in order to use these. Everybody can gather all three types of resource nodes. Once you have your gathering tools equipped, look on your mini-map for little ore symbols, little pieces of wood, or little herbs that you can gather. Striking these things not only gives you crafting materials, which you can either sell or use to level up your crafting disciplines, but you can see here, I'm getting experience points. That's an easy way to level up while you're just wandering around the world. Mine? 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 Number 8. A common piece of feedback for new Guild Wars 2 players is they're not sure what they're supposed to do when they enter the game. There's no quest hubs, there's no NPCs with exclamation marks over their head, so what are you supposed to be doing? Well, simply put, you're supposed to be just exploring the world. You can check out your map for different symbols to kind of go after. These different symbols on the left here mean all kinds of different things. Some of them uh, are just points of interest, areas to unlock and look at. Some of them are waypoints that you can teleport to. Um, and then there's these renowned hearts. These are the closest things there are in Guild Wars 2 to quests. You can see each one of them has a level, level 2, level 5, that's just a recommendation. These hearts, when when you get near them will appear automatically in the top right hand corner of the screen so i'm going to go over here to this one and you're going to see it's going to give me some, some things to do over here once i get close enough all right so here we go help cassie around the moa ranch search bushes for lost moas kill bandits and recover feed from bandit hot caverns all right so i can go over here and i can do a variety of different things i don't actually have to talk to this npc to get this quest and while you're doing these renowned hearts keep an eye out for these orange events that spawn up on your map here okay you can see here I have a rogue bull. Drive the rogue bull back home. Um, you can see that the event here is highlighted in orange on the map. And you can see we're going to actually try to wrangle this rogue bull. We're going to get a big chunk of experience points uh, as a result of completing this event. And we'll see how much our participation uh, awards us in a minute. All right, you can see here I got a gold medal for this event. 
If you participate a little bit less or you don't get there in time, you might get a silver or a bronze. And I'm going to get experience points and karma and uh, coins for actually completing that. So these are the kind of things that you're looking for. These dynamic events will appear all over the map. So simply put, you want to run around the world exploring. You can do these, uh, these little uh, heart quests. You can do un undiscovered points of interest. You can unlock waypoints. And while you're doing so, look out for events. And that's the main content in this game is just exploring the game and finding out what's happening in each zone. You don't have to uh, wait for your friends to actually pick up that same quest. You don't have to actually talk to specific NPCs to pick up quests. You just roam around the world and things will happen to you. There's just a little bit of a mindset change that has to occur if you're used to games like World of Warcraft or Wildstar or Star Wars The Old Republic. Just explore the world, have fun, and don't worry about if you're doing it right. Number 7 when you're playing Guild Wars 2, you don't have to worry about other players competing for resources. Everything is cooperative here on the open world on the PvE side. So here is a dynamic event that has spawned. We're trying to help Rancher Meppy against these waves of bandits. And there's other players here too. Every time we defeat a monster together, we get a full share of the experience points and our own personal loot. So we're not stealing any of these kills from anybody else and we're all going to get credit for this dynamic event. So whenever you see another player around the world fighting some creature, go ahead and give it a couple of shots. You're going to get experience points and loot for it too. And you're not stealing anything from them. You're not taking away any of their experience points or loot. So everybody is very friendly and cooperative in this game. We taught them a damn fine lesson. Nobody will dare mess with Mepi after this. Um... Except that guy. Same thing goes with any kind of mining nodes. It's not first come first serve in Guild Wars 2. Everybody can get their hits on any kind of resource node. So you can feel free to share mining nodes or wood gathering or herb gathering nodes with your friends. Mine? Number six. When you're trying to help out with a dynamic event or complete one of these heart quests, sometimes the objectives aren't quite clear. It says here to search bushes for lost moas, but you can run up to a bush and there could be nothing there to click on or do. Simply hold down the control key and the game will highlight things that you can interact with in the world. You can see while I hold down the control key, the suspicious bush is now highlighted and I can investigate it. And look here, a bandit will pop out of it for me to slay. So if you're looking for suspicious bushes, hold down the control key. Similarly, if you hold down the alt key, it will highlight any friendly NPCs name tags that are near you. You can see these domesticated Moa, the rancher Mepi, and even this other PC here, Lord Crisis, is standing there. Um, they actually, their nameplates don't appear unless I highlight over them, or I can hold down alt and you can see all of them appear. So control and alt, Holding them down while you're running around the world can be very helpful to find what you're looking for. This bush is totally suspicious. Number 5 When you complete one of these renowned hard quests, it shows up in the little right hand corner here. You can click on it and it's pretty self explanatory what you get. You get some coins, you get some karma, great. But you also unlock a merchant every time you complete one of these hearts. A lot of times the merchant is right nearby. Sometimes you have to look for them a bit. They will appear on the map next to the heart. Be sure to check them out. Look at what they have to offer. This is how you spend your karma, right? This is a different type of currency other than uh, coins and gold. And you spend them at these heart vendors here. So I can see here I've got a Moa collar. I can't quite equip this yet. But this is an accessory piece. It does have healing power stats on it for 91 karma. And uh, you can see uh, this is a great way to fill in some of your accessory slots, your ring slots. You'll find different things on different vendors. So I always like to check out and see what they have to offer. These vendors also have unique armor and weapon skins that you can unlock on your account permanently if you find them. I'm looking on this vendor here, it says right there in the middle of the screen, skin locked, right, for this harpoon. Skin unlocked for the spear gun, meaning I've already encountered this weapon in the game. So I'm gonna buy this Black Earth harpoon, and you can see the skin is unlocked on my account over here on the right hand side of the screen. Now I can go into my wardrobe at any time I want and use that skin. You can find a list of all of the unlocked weapons and stuff that you've unlocked by clicking on the different slots that you have on the screen. So some people like to collect their different wardrobe skins and these Karma heart vendors are a great way to get your hands on some. Number four. If your bags are getting full, let me show you the most handy dandy option in Guild Wars 2. You hit I to get into your inventory. All right, you can see my bags are somewhat full here. You click on this gear and then deposit all materials. What this is going to do is it's going to take any of my crafting materials or many of my crafting materials and actually put them into my bank. All right, I'm going to click this and boom, I've got a lot more inventory space. So anytime you your bags are looking a little full, hit that button and see how much room you actually save. Now, where does that stuff go? Well, it goes into your bank like I discussed, but how do you access that? Um, in the starting zones, you're going to find some areas where this, this little symbol here, this little money bag symbol, that is a banker. 
You can also access your bank at any of the crafting discipline stations. Tailoring station, all of these symbols here. Artificing station, weapon smithing, armor smithing stations, all of these things. Now, if you can't find them in the starting zone, then you can always go to a capital city and access your bank. But I will show you right here. You can open up your bank. Click on material storage here, and you can see it has uh, slots for all of the materials uh, that will uh, in the game that that you can actually store in here. Even stuff that I don't have, like I don't have any chickpeas on my account, uh, but it still shows me the symbols of all these things. So everything I just deposited went into this, and this and this storage is shared across all of your characters. So even if you log in another character and you hit deposit all materials, it keeps adding them up in here, and uh, and this is just a great convenient way of storing your goods. So don't forget, hit I, click on this gear, deposit all materials, and enjoy the fresh inventory room you've now freed up. Number three. Going into the options menu by hitting escape and clicking options can unveil a whole bunch of options which I think are really kind of important and convenient. Not all of these are going to be enabled by default, some of them may be, but I'm gonna, just going to show you my personal preferences here. I prefer to check AOE loot on interact so that when you hit your interact key and, and are looting in combat, it picks up uh, the loot from all of the bodies nearby so you don't have to do them individually. I also like auto loot so it doesn't actually show me the loot window, it just automatically grabs everything off of the ground and puts it in my inventory as long as I have space in my inventory window. Another thing I like to do here is click on show skill recharge so when I use something with a large cooldown like this ability it will actually show me a countdown of how long until that ability comes off cooldown again. Okay, enable first person camera is something I absolutely love. Without this option enabled you can't actually go to first person mode. So if you see here, I can, this is the furthest I can zoom in. My character is in the middle of my screen and I can't really see what I'm looking at. So if I go back into the options menu and click enable first person camera, you can see that you can zoom in uh, all the way just like many MMOs that are out there. I really think that that is a necessary option. Another one to play with in terms of the camera is uh, your field of view. All right, so right now, uh, by default, it might be somewhere in the middle, but you have to adjust it based on how far away your monitor is and how big your monitor is and what makes you feel comfortable. I like to have it uh, enabled all the way. It allows me to go way back and see the action like this, but uh, depending on uh, your own personal preferences, you know, you might not want to go back that far. Maybe this is how you enjoy the game. Uh, so that's another way to adjust the camera options. There's many other camera options here that you can uh, play around with in order to figure out what's comfortable for you. All right, the last one down here, and this is going to be a personal preference thing as well, is auto-targeting, okay? Some people would like to have auto-targeting enabled, so if I hit my number two key and I don't have anything uh, targeted, it's going to absolutely target the nearest thing and engage with them in combat. It could be really convenient for new players to do that. However, if you want to sometimes use these abilities to be like a movement ability, if I want to actually just run past things and uh, use my number two skill here on this thief to actually go faster, I want to be able to just hit that button and run past things and not necessarily engage in combat right away. If you have a lower end system and you're having some performance issues, you can go back into the options menu. This time, click on your graphics options and play around with the character model limit and the character model quality. Um, if you're playing with a large group of people, whether it's in world versus world or maybe doing some boss fights or something, you can actually set these to lower amounts and this will limit the number of characters that are actually on the screen. So even if you're surrounded by dozens of other players, it won't render every single one of them at the highest quality and you can see a great performance increase as a result. Number two. Okay, one of the last tips I want to point out is what happens when you go into this down state here. After your health hit reaches zero, you can actually still attack and use some abilities uh, to try to get yourself back up. Now, what I just did there is I rallied because one of the monsters I was fighting died while I was in that down state. So that's the first way you can try to get yourself back to life. You use the abilities, try to kill a creature around you, and uh, then you'll be revived and be able to go back up. Now, what happens if you're not able to kill a creature? One of the ways is a friend can come over and revive you. So if you see anybody in this down state, run over to them, interact with them, and you can see my fight to survive is filling back up. That other player that just helped me got some experience points for doing so. So it's a great way to actually bolster your leveling up. Okay, now the abilities in your down 
Ground State are different depending on what profession you are. Everybody has different abilities. You'll have to learn which each one of the, the professions has individually. You can see here Trial of Knives, Shadow Escape for the uh, Thief here. Now, number four is always Bandage. If I'm not getting hit by anyone, I can hit Bandage and it'll channel my life all the way back up. Since I am taking damage, uh, it actually cancels that effect. And so here I'm going to show you an example of what happens when I don't have anybody to revive me um, and my uh, fight to survive meter hits zero. Okay, now I'm defeated. My character is really dead. You can see everything goes uh, black and white. Now I can click this button here to return to a waypoint. So all I have to do is go to the nearest waypoint or any other waypoint that I've unlocked and I can teleport there and I will be brought back to life. Now when I'm brought back to life in this example, my, uh, my equipment here, one of my items got damaged. All right, all my equipment can become damaged and then eventually broken and then they lose their effectiveness. To repair them is very simple. What you're going to do is you're going to find somewhere on the world uh, this symbol right here, this broken red shield. I'm going to go over to it here and show you what that looks like. Sometimes it's a vendor, sometimes it's just an anvil out in the world. In this case, it's an actual vendor. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say, great, fix me up. And you'll see that this little symbol on my equipment goes away. By the way, there's no charge to doing this whatsoever. It doesn't cost you any money uh, to do this. Great, fix me up. And voila, my armor is now completely restored. Number one. Now those dynamic events I was talking about earlier sometimes spawn on a timer or they just happen in the world at random intervals. Sometimes though you can click on NPCs that have this symbol on their head to actually activate one of these events. Taking your time to actually read gives you some context of what these events are all about. Shh, don't let my father see me. I'm going to impress him by getting that big ram's head to hang over his smokehouse. I want to show him I could be a hunter. I'll guide you to the biggest ram in Tyria if you let me take its head. So now I'm going to follow this kid and we're going to kill Longshanks. Um, this is a an event that is going to spawn out here. Now the, the tip here that I want to kind of point out is to stick around after the event. Don't always just run away right after the event completes because there's some interesting things that can occur. All right, so here's Longshanks. We're gonna try to take this out for this kid. Okay, so now the event's over and you might feel compelled to just wander on your way. I already got my reward, but watch what this kid does. Okay, so he's actually working on this, this ramp here and you can follow these NPCs. Dad wants the head. I can't wait to show him the head. He'll howl when he sees this. Okay, so now we're going to follow Jaffrey back. You can see he actually has a ram head. Now, there's nothing that's forcing you to do this, um, but sometimes you could just get into the lore and the story a little bit, and sometimes it'll actually chain and lead to another event. Um, so sometimes these events will end, and you can find yourself on a journey of, you know, four, five, six events in a row. It can be really good for your experience points. In this case, it's just a cool little interaction between this boy and his father. Jaffrey, you know you're not ready to hunt. Mom would kill me. I was careful, Dad. Someone killed the ram and let me take the head. You met a generous hunter, son, but you did something dangerous. Next time, we hunt together. Really? So, do you like it? Do you like the head? I do, son. It will make a fine addition to the smokehouse. And there you have it, Longshank's head on a plaque. Well, that's going to wrap things up, folks. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 tips for new Guild Wars 2 players. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing before you go. Also, if you've never played Guild Wars 2 before, you can create an account and jump into the game right now absolutely for free. There's a link in the description of this video. If you use that link when you sign up for your free account, it directly supports my channel and uh, helps me out quite a bit. You also can pre-purchase the Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns expansion with a different referral link also found in the description of this video. And I hope everybody has a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.